Before I dive into the bulk of my talk today, I would like for you to just internally consider to what extent you would agree to the following statement, just internally. Asian kids are good at math because they're smart. Now, I personally agree to the first half that, yes, Asian kids are good at math, while I disagree to the second part where it claims that Asian kids are good at math because they're smart. And now, before you accuse me of being overly fixated on the stereotypical depiction of Asian kids as nerdy math and science wizards, allow me to explain myself and prove to you that no, I'm not borderly, secretly racist. The following infographic that you see is the International Mathematics Achievement Result organized by the TIMSS based on a standardized math test taken by 8th grade students globally in 2015. We have Singapore, Korea, Chinese, China, Taipei, and Hong Kong SAR and Japan as the top five countries in that order. And they're all located in East Asia, mind you. And now these top five countries actually performed so much better than the rest of the countries with a whopping 48 points difference between fifth place Japan and sixth place the Russian Federation that they even got their own specialized place on a floating cloud. Well, that was 2015, and now it's 2019, so that's around four years outdated. So I searched for more recent statistics and ended up with this. This is the list of regional champions of the 2018 Fermat Math Contest held and hosted in Canada. Now, if you will see over here, there are 19 district champions and in which 13 of them have Chinese last names. And those of you at the back, you do not have to panic. I have highlighted the names in yellow so you can get a gist of how many people have Chinese last names. In all seriousness, only 17.7% .7 of the entire Canadian population have Asian ancestry. And so just by looking at this list, we can tell that Canadian kids with Asian ancestry are overwhelmingly outperforming Canadians that don't have Asian ancestry. So yes, I think that was enough to prove my point that Asian kids are good at math. But can we really say that they're good at math because they're smart? I think not, because if Asians were really that smart and their compatibility with math just came from their blood, then why is it that nearly most of the predominant figures that left the largest footprints in math as a field of study all, well, white? Let's take a look at just a century ago in the early 1900s. In the West, you have these nice industrialized countries making use of complex math, physics, and chemistry to create engines and other tools of convenience. On the other hand, you have, well, China still under the outdated imperial reign, and Korea, well, doomed to be annexed soon. Let's take a closer look at Korea. In the early 1900s, and pretty young in the mid-1900s, Korea was one of the world's poorest countries in the world. And education, while well, educating the um, national populace, became a national priority for the people, which in turn opened to new ways of modernization and technological development. And as a result, many Koreans today and a society, the Korean society as a general, view education not, as, not just as compulsory, but really important in finding success in life. And so in mere half a century, Korea had went from one of the world's poorest countries in the world to one where it hails studies as religion and cram schools as churches. But my main point here is 
that Asian countries have started to recognize education as their national priorities for their children, and they have found it perfectly reasonable that students tend to stay in front of their desk spending tedious hours studying whether they enjoy it or not. And while it is definitely true that mathematics is undeniably an important subject, it is also undeniable that advanced math such as trigonometry, calculus, complex numbers, and vectors simply aren't really that applicable to the majority of the people who don't engage in math or sciences that require vigorous math after they leave high school. Not only that, the way math is being taught today makes it difficult for students to understand the point in just playing with numbers. And students struggling in math simply ask, why do we learn this? How am I going to use this later in my life? And some teachers struggle to answer questions like that. And that just reinforces to those students that math serves no meaning and purpose to them. And many students just don't feel the need to excel in math in order to succeed in life, nor do they harbor any interest to a subject that seemingly seems so meaningless. And high school students who won't pursue math later on in their careers or at university simply brush the subject aside and firmly hope they will never have to see another math exercise sheet ever again. But countries such as the US or countries in Europe are seeking to make changes in the way that their schools teach students math in order to enhance their performances. For example, 2016, UK had announced a plan to adopt the way math is being taught at Singapore for half of their primary schools. And other countries and organizations have taken a slightly different approach to this. And this approach supposedly is supposed to make subjects like this feel a bit more interesting to students. They have dubbed this approach the concept-based approach. And what they have done here is that instead of organizing um, textbooks into the traditional way of organizing the curriculum in units, they have in turn grouped these curriculum in the order of concepts or how they are applied in real life. Their assumption is that by making students understand that the math they're being taught in school today can be applied in real life, they will by extension think that maybe there is point in studying math no matter how much they may be failing or not. Does that sound awkward to you? Well, it should, because it's certainly not the most conventional or traditional way in which math is being taught. Traditionally, math is taught in the progression of complexity of the units. That is because math, the order in which you learn math is very important, as math is a subject that requires a solid base understanding of the basics step by step. Everything is an application of one another, and if one tries to skip a certain unit to learn something more difficult, then they will find themselves struggling miserably because they wouldn't be able to follow or understand what's going on. Well, it's hard to solve algebra, even if you know addition, if you don't know multiplication. And I guess it's clear that we understand that students don't do well in math because they were born so. Well, it is true that maybe some students have been born with a more logical mindset or with a bit more of a natural sense when it comes to numbers. It, however, by no standards mean that only a selected few gifted individuals can excel in math. What some students lack is the interest, time, motivation, and the right education system that really helps them understand what they are learning in math class. 
The current education system in math may have some problems that need to be solved, but everything comes with a cost. If you don't find a way that fascinates and motivates a student, they wouldn't feel urged to try their best in class. And if you focus too much on trying to get students to engage with the subject, you can end up with a system that's impractical and one that students just find it difficult to follow. And no matter how well of an education system we implement, sadly, it will never equate to an instantaneous boost in our grades. That's because no matter how well-established teachers and their education systems are, studies are just eventually up to us students. If we students don't feel the need to motivate ourselves and put in the will and effort to do well, everything will just be for naught. What we need in our education system is one that balances a way to drive motivation to our students while maintaining a reasonable level of practicality. And to complement that, we really need students to understand that studying in times is a tedious process that's not necessarily always fun. And it's only natural that not everyone feels math is fun or important, but it's undeniable and it's really important to understand that math is important and sometimes important things in life are not necessarily enjoyable and only if we embrace these two ideas will we be finally able to really boost our grades in math thank you